one move that did get my attention. Josie Altador loaned uh, from New England to Puebla in Liga MX. Uh, one goal in 17 games for Josie this season with the Revs. I'm actually surprised how much of the discourse around this move has still been U.S. national team centric. There's a thought that Josie's going there to try to play regularly and score some goals and try to earn a place on the plane to Qatar. I went into this year still thinking there was a chance because that center forward spot is so wide open and Josie, given his pedigree, if he plays well, it's such a young team. Berhalter, I think, does want to sprinkle in a few veterans, but I'm sorry. I mean, he's had a great career. I don't want to be too hard on him, but watching him the past few months with New England, I, I think that ship has sailed. I mean, do, do you still buy there's, that there's any chance for Josie Altador to go to this World Cup? Thank you, Mossy. Okay. How do I start? Serenity now. Um <laughs> Years ago, when Greg Berhalter took over, and I was asked to give my list of strikers, right? I put Josie Altador at the top. And I remember having heated conversations with people, questioning in disbelief how I could possibly have Josie Altador still as our main striker. And I very calmly and I think quite well, explained my position in that at that moment, there was nobody better. That's not a good thing, but it's just the reality that Josie Altidore in that moment was the best that we had until something better came along. Now, however many years later, four years, five, later, five years later, the fact that there is even a conversation that Josie Altidore should be starting for the national team based on the potential of him going down to Mexico and scoring goals blows my mind. I cannot for the life of me understand how a player who cannot find success right now in major league soccer and is now going down to Mexico somehow is going to be rejuvenated, score a bunch of goals and everybody now thinks it's completely legitimate that Josie Altidore could potentially represent the United States in the World Cup. One, I don't care how many goals Josie Altidore scores down in Mexico. I don't think that that is changing Greg Berhalter's mind for a couple of reasons. I think that he has moved on. And look, I'm not saying that the number nine position has been filled. It is still by committee right now, and I'm not happy with the number nine position. But I'm not so unhappy that I'm willing to think about Josie Altidore at this point. Four years ago, or whenever I was talking about it, yeah. But a lot has changed since then. I don't think that Josie Altidore should be anywhere near the national team. Not because he's not a good player, okay? He's certainly not a great player right now. But much more because of what Greg Berhalter has created. This is a veteran player. This is a old player coming into the dynamic in the same way. And I know we'll talk about John Brooks here in a second, in the same way that I think the ship has sailed, the train has left the station, whatever you want to use when it comes to John Brooks, it's even more so for Josie Altidore, in particular in this national team, which has hung its hat on being young and being inexperienced and having that that youthful swagger, who ironically, which, which, which ironically is what uh, Josie Altidore's now former coach, I guess it would be Bruce Arena, has said so much about when it comes to the international game. It is a young man's game. It is a young woman's game. Yes, it is. And so I don't think, regardless of what happens down in Mexico with Josie Altidore, that it is prudent to have Josie Altidore with the national team going forward. And I don't think as I said, regardless of what happens, it is going to come to fruition that he comes back to the national team, let alone is on that plane to Qatar. You like that clip? Well, my State of the Union podcast drops every week. Subscribe now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts.